And they've also drawn attention to the number of drones being used to smuggle drugs and other illicit items into the prison, with a drone being seized there every single week. Let's talk to former prisoner and campaigner Sean Atwood. Good morning. Morning, Stephen. I can't help but notice you've got the same haircut as Prince William, <laughs> which, I think, which I think you spotted when we were <laughs> the papers, didn't you? I did mind myself. How, how bad does a situation have to be in prison to be getting these, these sort of details through? Well, when society rounds up drug addict criminals and puts them in a place where there's the hardest drugs readily available, you're never going to stop drugs getting in. Guards were selling them where I was at, a nurse was selling them for the Mexican Mafia, and now you've got the drones, which... A nurse was selling them for the Mexican Mafia? Yeah. There's so much profit in bringing drugs into prison, it's corrupted every profession that's involved in incarceration. Well, now, th explain this to me, because ha how are people even paying for it, then? OK, because say... They, should they shouldn't have vast amounts of money in prison anyway. Say I'm in prison, you're my drug dealer, and I run up a heroin debt with you, save a £1,000. I contact my girlfriend on the streets, she pays your people on the streets, and that method is called street to street. <sighs> OK. How do we stop? I mean, people hearing this will be a bit like me, I'd imagine, and just appalled that this is happening. So, how do you stop it? Prisons were designed for paedophiles, murderers, rapists, robbers, and now they become warehouses for low-level drug users. So if you decriminalise drugs and people who are caught with drugs get referred over to mental health, you completely end this problem. That's a very big change, though, isn't it? It's a root cause of the current predicament Unless they address the root cause, the government comes in with all these things they say they're going to do to stop it, but all it is is putting a Band-Aid over the wound. I mean, uh, and would you put the whole sort of drone issue uh, under that sort of Band-Aid idea? The, 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 sorry, a drone a week at Liverpool is a lot. Oh, there's drones dropping millions of dollars worth of drugs in prisons all over the world presently, and that prevents the guards having to bring it in, and it prevents the prisoners from having to smuggle it in because you're strip-searched all the time. You've got to get completely naked, bend over, spread your buttocks, cough, and they're, they're checking out to see if you're bringing anything in. So with the drones, it, it's circumventing those methods. In terms of, uh, of, of getting drugs out of prison, I mean, you say, you know, if you decriminalise the, the whole thing, then you're taking this, this huge sort of segment out of the prison population. Yeah. But they're still going to... You know, the, the, you've still got your murderers, paedophiles and everybody else yeah. who would still be there, who... A number of them, at least, would be drug users who would still want a supply. It would vastly reduce the prison population and then you could supervise those minority of prisoners more effectively and keep the drugs at a minimum. You're never, ever going to stop it. I was in Supermax from security. They couldn't even stop the drugs from getting into Supermax. Wow. What about the conditions? I mean, Liverpool is now, we're being told, is, is the absolutely terrible conditions there. There's going to be questions raised about why that has happened, how you improve those conditions. Yeah. What impact does it have on prisoners and, and their mentality in prison, how they're behaving as inmates? We want them to get out and be model citizens, yet we treat them like animals. In the Liverpool prison, there's um, rats, there's cockroaches. Where, where I was at, the cockroaches would line up in the cracks in the wall just before the lights went out, as if they knew the lights were about to go out. As soon as the lights went out, they would flood the room. They don't bite, but they tickle your feet, get on your legs, tickle your hands. They try to get in your ears to eat your earwax. It's like oh. honey to them. I had a neighbour who was asthmatic. He woke up one morning, out of breath, grabbed his inhaler, took a blast, psh, shoots a live cockroach inside himself. So that's freaking out, saying he could feel it moving around. Oh. He threw up, and somehow it was stuck inside him, and it wouldn't even come out. Oh, that's just awful. But there will be people watching, though, saying... Well, actually, why should uh, prisoners should be having a rough time? Actually, they should be unpleasant conditions. Yeah. It is about punishment as much as it's about rehabilitation. For many people, they think it's more about punishment than rehabilitation. That's what I thought as well. I thought prisoners, paedophiles, murderers, robbers, rapists, lock them up, throw away the key. But when I got in there, in Arizona, I was incarcerated. The average arrest was a black kid or a Mexican kid with a little bit of weed. They get turned on to heroin in the prison. 90% of the prisoners were shooting up heroin. Two-thirds of hepatitis C. They get these neo-Nazi gang tattoos. And by the time they get out, they are proper full-on criminals. Nearly everybody I saw got released and came right back. That's why it's an absolute disaster for the taxpayers to have these low-level drug users in prison. OK, Sean, fascinating to talk to you. Thank you very much You're indeed. Welcome. Any thoughts that you have on that? At Sky Stephen, at Sky Gillian on Twitter, or you can email us news at sky.com.
Let's change tack slightly, find out what's coming up in the sport. Jamie? Yes, change tack just a bit. I can't stop thinking about that cockroach. But uh, in happy.